we'll see uh, where do we end inshallah we only have a few minutes left uh, another point about uh, this chapter is Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi has mentioned about 30 ahadith which is which is uh, not his normal habit normally he would bring only a few ahadith in one chapter and then he would uh, he would uh, frame a new chapter here in one chapter babu dhikril malaika the mention of angels he has brought 30 ahadith and those 30 ahadith basically they are about the different functions of angels what angels do and also they are about different angels as well the names of some angels are mentioned the same the name of most angels are not mentioned just like the names of the prophets some names uh, uh, some uh, prophets names are mentioned in quran and the majority of them their names are not mentioned so just like that in angels as well uh, the majority of angels their names are not mentioned the names of only few uh, are mentioned in quran and the names of few are mentioned in the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam for example uh, jibril alayhi salam is the chief of all angels then there is mikail alayhi salam we will also learn the duties of jibril alayhi salam and mikail alayhi salam and then there is israfil alayhi salam israfil alayhi salam is the uh, is the third ranking angel and then the fourth ranking angel is uh, malakul maut some people have also called him Israel, but the ahadith only uh, only uh, mention this angel by the name Malakul Maut. Malakul Maut means the angel of death. Now uh, he is the he is the leader. He is the in charge. Then uh, in his authority, there are also many many groups of angels who are uh, who are his helpers or who are his assistants who are doing the same job of you know uh, taking the life away from people who are also angels of death but he is the chief he is known as malakul maut then there's a, another name that has been mentioned in quran of another angel who is the gatekeeper of hellfire his name is malik that name has been mentioned in surah az zukhruf so this this prophet uh, this uh, angel uh, he is the main gatekeeper of the hellfire so no one can uh, go into the hellfire without his permission and no one can come out of hellfire without his permission so on the day uh, on the day of judgment after that long period after that when the people the dwellers of hellfire they will be tired of the torture and the punishment in hellfire they will call on to this angel fanado ya malik they will say oh malik liyakhdi alayna rabbu that pray to your lord ask your lord that he makes decision in our uh, uh, about our, about us so we can either be finished or we can be transferred to paradise so he will say, Qal He will say, No, you're going to stay here. May Allah save all of us. May Allah protect all of us from that. And then there's another angel who is known as Malakul Jibal, the angel of mountains. He's, he doesn't live in mountains. The angel of mountains is the angel who has given the responsibility of making sure that the mountains are doing what they are supposed to do and they are where they are supposed to be so he is the he is the watch person of mountains all around the world in the entire world so he is known as malakul jibal sometimes this angel appeared before the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to uh, to offer him his help when the people rejected the Prophet ﷺ, when people tried to uh, hurt the Prophet ﷺ, this angel, he appeared before the Prophet ﷺ and he said, O oh Prophet of Allah, if you ask me, I will, I will crush all these people who have tried to harm you, who have tried to hurt you in between the two mountains. I'll bring these two mountains together 
and they will be crushed in between and no one will be able to save them. So the Prophet ﷺ said, no, I don't want to punish these people. I want to pray for these people. So he prayed for those people. Instead of, instead of asking the angel, yes, let them taste the, 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 the consequence of what they have done to the Prophet of Allah. And the angel would have brought the two mountains together and he would have crushed them. Instead, the Prophet of Allah, the mercy for all mankind, the mercy for the worlds, he chose to pray for these people and they were later guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They all embraced Islam. And these were the people of Taif. So Malakul Jibal is another angel that has been mentioned. The, the scholars have said that angels, Al Malaika Ajsamun Latifa. Angels, they are very subtle bodies. They, they are not like human bodies. The human bodies can be seen. The bodies they, that the angels are given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they cannot be seen. This is why the Prophet sallallahu said خُلِقَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ مِن نُور That the angels were created from nur, from the light. So the, what has been created from light cannot be seen. So these, these angels cannot be seen unless they take the form of a visible creature. And this is why the scholar said they have been given this power from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take up different shapes and different forms. They can. Allah, when, when Allah gives them the ability, when Allah gives them the power to, let's say, for example, take up the form of a human being, they appear in form of a human being. And there are many stories many incidents mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. For example, the, the, uh, the story of the three afflicted ones, the leper, the bald, and the one who was, uh, who was suffering from uh, a bodily disease. So these three people, they were tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested them by sending an angel to each and, every, each and every single one of these three people. And that angel did not appear as an angel. That angel appeared before these three people in form of a human being who asked them, what do you want? What do you wish for? So the first person, the bald guy, he said, I want hair on my body, uh, on my head. I want to look handsome. I want hair on my head. So that's something I want. And I want a lot of wealth as well. So the angels prayed to Allah. And Allah gave this person uh, hair on his head. And he gave him a lot of wealth. The, the leper, he, he wanted to be cured from leprosy. So the angel prayed for that. And Allah cured him. And Allah gave him a lot of wealth. And the third person, he, he wanted to be cured from that disease. And Allah cured him from that disease as well. Later, that, angel, that same angel, after many years, returned to uh, these three people one by one. And he asked for help. So to first person, angel, the angel appeared in form of a bald person. And in, to other person, the, the angel appeared in form of another human being. To the third person, the angel appeared uh, in form of another human being. So there are many stories in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ when angels appear before other human beings in form of human beings. But when they are in their real form of creation, they cannot be seen by human eye. Neither can our cameras catch them. Whether you, you're looking with an infrared camera or with a night vision camera or with, uh, with, with a 
uh, with a high quality 